fertilization contract, there's a bunch of harvesting contracts, and there's a liming contract. I don't have a liming tool. Um, field 65 and lower. is in here. 65 is not bad. The 50s and the 40s are down the bottom there. Um, if I stay above 45, uh, 65, 49, and 3 and 20 I think are at the top. 20's there, 3 is... Where is 3? Oh, there. I could do 20 and 3. How about that? Let's do 20 and 3. Now I need to check on my cultivator. My staff cultivators. That is a 220 horsepower cultivator, and um, still in the same section. That is a 295 tractor. So I can, whoops, I can do that with the class, the little class rather than the big one. I don't know if I can get out. <laughs> It's the only problem. Of course, what I need to do is stick it in reverse, not forwards. And don't hit the header, because that's a very expensive piece of a kit. Even if I did buy it used. And yes, we can squeeze out of that hole. Okay. Cultivator. That should be the thing that's unfolded in the middle there. And again, we use this piece of equipment to do the work rather than the big Zarian because this is cheaper to fix than the Zarian would be. <coughs> so, let's get out there, do some dirt churning. Now the thing with these fields is I might cultivate them, but... Okay, hang on. Now I want to lime it, then cultivate it. Okay. It occurred to me that the field that I mulched has not been cultivated. That was just straight after harvest. Now that's a good thing and a bad thing. It does mean that if I want to seed in it, I either need to cultivate it or use a direct drill. And I do not have a direct drill for um, cereal crops yet. However, can we go down there and turn detail? Thank you. I need to unfold it. Okay then. Yes, this is one of the Porsche aggravation pack pieces of equipment which you have to do things in a set sequence. Oh, I have GPS on this track. Good. you have to unfold a piece of equipment before you can put it down, um, which isn't standard for in-game stuff. Mm. The one, yes. Auto width, yes. Um, set a hit zero back. And off we go. Okay, <coughs> this will make the job a little bit easier.
can trundle through this bit. No trouble. I will do a couple of headland rows before I uh, go full bore up and down the field. But should be able to get these out. When did I say the rain was coming? Eight o'clock. Oh. This field is a little bit more large. Actually, I should really be doing this field in this direction rather than up and down. I might switch switch the angle on that GPS track. Just so we go, yeah, you go the longest straight before you have to turn around because it means you're turning around less frequently and turning around is what uses up the time. So instead, well, what I'll do is I'll run north-south two or three times, I go two times at this side, go three times on the other side and then we'll just cross backwards and forwards, get this field out. Proximity of that shed isn't the greatest thing. So, do that. So long as I stay close to the edge, we should be good here. side of the field. Okay, I'm going to go up this side anyway. I guess I can see, if I can do three rows or two rows at this end and get, that looks like it's wide enough least for this tractor to turn around. Also going laterally east-west across the field does mean that we are following a better grade on the hill. We're not climbing up that steep bit, although this tractor didn't have any problem with that at all. Look at that. Yeah, we're not really running anything special on this tractor except GPS. Because GPS is just awesome. Okay, control S, set A, 90, back, and turn it on, lower the dune thing, and off we go. So, TV stuff this year, I'm not watching anything at the moment. I do believe that a lot of the regular TV shows come back after the Super Bowl. Uh, because of the strike last year, uh, the actors and the writers, a lot of shows did not release in September. And I think the only ones that did were ones where they had a number of sample scripts provided because it was a new show and they could effectively set up for filming pretty much immediately in September or when the strike was over. Do go forwards. 
but of a, a lot of the established shows we're on strike we're not ready to go we don't have any scripts ready for next year because the writers went on strike before the scripts were done I believe what the way the business works is when a when a show is thrown out there they would be looking at um, selling the show to a TV company for next year but when they provide it the TV company will sort of say yes we like the look of the pilot or could you make a couple of changes we don't like the test of this actor can you replace them um, and we'd like to see where the show is going so can you give us some script um, ideas for your first half season before we commit to buying it from you type of thing and and so they do have something to go with as soon as filming can start and this year filming didn't happen in spring through most of summer so the only things we've really been getting is the um, so-called reality TV which is kind of unscripted but we still tell the reality people what we'd like them to do but they're all still fake for the most part doing okay so that's good Put cruise control on I want to go back and check the weather again 8 o'clock is when it starts raining so I've got 1 hour 20 minutes which is 80 minutes divide by about 3 years yeah about half an hour of re real time to get these jobs done before it starts raining and we'll have to skip time and I do want to turn around at any second now at the very least it would be good to get this one done about we'll travel over to the next one and we'll sit around and wait for the the ground to dry three hours of rain is just gonna be horrible and we do know that you take a lot of damage okay where are uh, fertilizer spreaders See, that's 78,000. We do have that amount of money, though. And I think manure spreaders, some manure spreaders, will spread lime. Usually in... Oh, there you go. So that one will do manure or lime, but it's 87,000. Too much money. That one is 117,000 and none of the rest of So the manure spreaders are not going to help us and they seem to have crashed into a tree, which is a bad thing. But yeah, the big, the big breedle. We can now actually afford at least a base unit. I kind of want the spreading discs, I kind of want the extensions, so uh, that will add to the price of it. But, and I could take out a 20,000 loan just to cover the cost of the upgrades. That will give us the lime spreader. We'll be able to go out and spread lime in our field. Oh, I also need a don't have a direct drill but I can put a cedar attachment on our cultivator this cultivator here will take a cedar attachment 
So we could buy one and attach it, and that's only a couple of thousand. And I have a feeling that if I do that, it will count as direct drilling rather than cultivating and drilling. And so we won't get penalised on the environmental score if we use that setup. But I would like a, a bigger seed at the seed drill. This is only what six meters. If we can get to, I think our plant is about 12, 11 and a half, 12. If we can get that wide, we can get jobs done a lot quicker. Cultivators, we're always going to be limited to about six meters. going on in the world. I have asked Mrs. Osa this week to uh, if she could get out and measure the deck and f probably look up the plants she wants to plant and how much room they need. Um, so we can plan on buying some lumber and building some planters before planting season. The problem we had last year was um, she's like, oh, I want to plant some stuff on the deck. Um, can you make some planters? Yes, I can. Um, and I built one just to see if the idea was sound and it worked out fine. So I started, you know, I bought the lumber to build, I think it was two more. We got one small one which was the the test bed and then yes this works I'll build something a little bit bigger and the problem is is while the bigger ones are good for sort of a cluster of four pepper shrubs or whatever hot peppers green peppers you know the pepper plants uh, when it comes to things like lettuce, they're just a little bit too small to get two rows in. And so that, I need her to tell me, okay, I want two rows of something or three rows of something and they need, you know, a foot on each side. So if I get three rows, then we're going to need one, two, three. It's going to need to be about almost four foot wide. I can do that, but I need to know up front how wide I need to make it, how long I need to. I'm probably going to limit it still to six foot long. Um, and if you want a 12 foot long plot, I'll build two and put them end to end rather than, because they're easier to move around. I don't fancy moving around a 12 foot planter that's loaded with dirt. So they have to be a reasonable size, but I, I do need to know what, what width to make them because I think the ones I built are a little bit too narrow for some of the crops she wants to plant. Um, and then how many do you want? is the next thing and then I can draw up a, a cut list of lumber and uh, at least during the colder wetter months I can uh, I can be cutting the wood down to size and probably I find it easy I make the legs and probably bolt them to the ends carry those up to the deck and then screw the sides on and just assemble it all. 
Hodge173, good morning and welcome to my Saturday stream. But yeah, once once I built the and, and the pro, as I said, the problem was I built one to test, and then by the time I bought the lumber and started assembling the next ones, we were into planting season, and she wanted to put things into dirt, and we didn't have any dirt for her to put them in. And so by the time I'd got them all assembled, or cut and assembled, and that it was late in the plant or later in the planting season than we'd have liked to be planting not that it wasn't a complete failure i think she wanted to grow watermelons because the kids like watermelons i don't she doesn't but um they didn't grow very big they were more they were smaller than basketballs um, we did get a fairly good crop of green peppers and what I said about the, yeah, we could grow two rows. I think the problems were the two rows were a little bit too close. So the peppers weren't the size you'd buy in a store. They were, yeah, they were adequate for one person to have on one pizza. Um, but see, also, if, if I make a chili, I kind of like to get... A colourful chilli. Um, I, I base it on my mum's uh, recipe and she would use a green a green pepper, um, mushrooms, tomatoes and um, if I've got a tiny green pepper then I could buy a red pepper, um, not a spicy one just a red pepper to provide a little bit of colour or a yellow pepper and it would just it makes the food a little bit more interesting if it's all not just one colour. So that's where I go with that. Um, and then onions. I, th I think she planted onions, but she planted onions in some very shallow um, plastic planters that we already had. Uh, what I'm planning to do this year is probably build a planter box that looks like the others, so it looks like it's all coordinated, but I won't put the bottom of it as, as deep as a standard one, and then we can just put the little plastic planters in there, and they will, from the side it'll look like. The, the, yeah, the other planters, it's a set with the other planters, but if you get close to it, you'll see there's two little plastic planters inside. They're probably about four foot long. But I'm thinking those would be better to plant um, herbs in. Chives, rosemary, parsley. We planted our herbs in the test planter last year, and our basil got completely out of control. It was a small shrub by the end of it, and the rest of the herbs just completely overshadowed were anemic. But we probably won't grow basil this year. We'll, we'll concentrate on the herbs that we do use fresh. I think they can probably sit in the little plastic planters because they don't they don't need depth. They just need you know you're picking at them constantly, so you just need them to be there. We planted lettuce, they did okay. We planted beans, rather, uh, was it green beans, in the planters downstairs. Unfortunately, it was a good crop, but the deer ate it, so uh, that was a little unfortunate. We planted peas, but then we had a storm, and the pea, uh, the the a frames, the peas were climbing up, got knocked over. So we didn't end up with a very good supply of peas. We had peas, but not enough for a meal. I think she planted carrots. They worked out 
kind of okay. That, that, that was the thing. We planted carrots, but we didn't plant enough of them, and they were kind of baby carrots. So, uh, and then we planted lettuce, and lettuce was, it was just too close together. It couldn't flesh out and become a big head of lettuce. Um, it wasn't too bad. I mean, if you want to have lettuce in your sandwich, you could go out, grab a leaf, stick it in your sandwich, and there was enough lettuce leaves to, uh, to be able to do that. But there wasn't nearly enough to make a salad out of. And as I said, I think I think it was they were too close together. Oops. I'm trying to think what else. Oh, we did we did plant a hot pepper plant, which produced lots and lots of little sort of. Mm, half inch, three quarter inch long little red peppers really hot and that was just amazing we ended the season there were still hot peppers on the tree, on the plant because I just couldn't eat them all but uh, but if you wanted hot peppers in something you you cut them in half and that was about as small as they would get The watermelons. Yeah, so that was our escapades last year, but I re I do want. I know she wants to plant more this year, but um, what needs to happen is we need to have the planters ready to plant when the weather turns nice. And uh, like I said, the problem last year was um, I couldn't get out to cut the wood until the weather got nice and when the weather got nice I'm sort of cutting wood that I really needed to be assembling into a planter immediately and I've got weekends that I can do that 